the film screened last night, correct? Yes, yeah. it did. Yeah, it was the first screening yeah, uh, yeah. last night. It's going to screen again uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. Very cool. Um, let's start with that. I want to know how that screening went and what reactions to this movie, what the reactions uh, of the audience to this movie was. Yeah, it's 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 a film um, that that where a lot of uh, questions are asked during the, the <laughs> Q and A's. So the the Q and A probably lasted a good almost half hour, I, mm. I, I would say, and it's such an interesting experience to see the different reactions when we present the film. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still questions, new questions yeah. that that arise. So it was a great experience to to present the film in Vancouver. It was the the film's premiere for BC, the BC yeah, premiere yeah, BC of the film. Mm -hmm. And did you want to know more in details what the questions were in general or? No, I'll leave those for the, the Q&A oh, sure. audiences yeah. who can be there in person. But, okay, um, perfect. But, but it, it was a good it. turn up too, yeah. uh, like uh, lots of people. Uh, and uh, no, yeah, they seem to appreciate <laughs> it. It's not the, obviously the first time that we accompany the film. But uh, but yeah, uh, as Nick mentioned, it's a bit different. Like uh, for me, what's interesting is to notice the differences, let's say. Okay, in yes. Quebec, you get more questions along those lines. And in uh, Western Canada, because we screened in Calgary also right before. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, uh, noticing the trends, it, it, it's kind of fun. Uh, we're learning in the process, too. It's a two way street, I feel. <laughs> that is fun. You know, I, I like doing these because this is like my own personal Q&A. Um, <laughs> and so this, this is always fun to, to do. Um, uh, can you give really quick for those who are discovering the film, can you give a quick synopsis on what Red Rooms is about? Yeah, Red Rooms, it's a film where we follow a character that is obsessed by a serial killer on trial. Uh, her motivations are pretty uh, uh, vague and becomes clearer as the film progresses. But uh, she gets involved in because the, the killer in the movie actually uh, did uh, interactive uh, snuff like uh, videos. And we get the feeling that the character is maybe more involved in, 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 in either consuming or trying to acquire those videos along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a very very interesting film. Um, you know, as I was watching it, um, and uh, like certain things came to mind, like other films that it reminded me of. I had actually just seen uh, Anatomy of a Fall this weekend, oh, yeah. so I'm getting a lot of court drama. A lot uh, of court and, yeah. dramas. There's the Goldman uh, trial. Uh, yeah, also. yeah. Mm -hmm. Last year, yeah. Saint, Saint Omer was another Saint -Omer. one. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and all of these films, uh, I I think I really do, frankly, think that. Uh, it's the, the true crime craze was off the roof during the pandemic and oddly mm -hmm. enough like I, I just think a lot of people just watch the same thing and got inspired in, in, in almost <laughs> a subliminal way by the same things like uh, yeah it's very strange that there were so many <laughs> court rooms films that being said our film uh, uh, we're pretty uh, uh, happy about the way we depicted the courtroom scenes because mm -hmm. In the Montreal courthouse, it's it's this very like brutalist building. It's it's nothing to do with like the 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 the, the wooden carved like high ceiling courtrooms we're used to seeing mm -hmm. in, in a lot of like classic courtroom dramas. Uh, it's very cold. It's very like I don't know like clinical, yeah, clinical, clinical yeah. hospital like almost. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we 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 instead of trying to do uh, to shape it differently, we actually exacerbated th that quality, like made it extra 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 cold and, and bland and uh, and and making it interesting in the process so i think in that way and in the way maybe we filmed some of the courtroom scenes uh, it, it it can i think maybe stand out from all of them but uh, mm -hmm. yes it's true that there there were lots of uh, and another you know call is amazing it's a yeah, very I'm, great film i'm always down for a courtroom movie um <laughs> i have not been disappointed by by that subgenre yet and so yeah, yeah. I, and this of course contributes to how much i enjoy uh those type mm -hmm. of, of storytelling um yeah i think how those courtroom scenes are captured is super interesting because i uh i'm a big fan of long takes and single take uh sequences and there are a lot of long takes just kind of the camera floating around the room or panning back and forth um since you mentioned that can you talk to me a little bit more about um the style in which you decided to capture mm -hmm. uh those scenes and also uh, the style that you um chose for the for the film sure well the, for starters the 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 courtroom like the courthouse is the actual montreal courthouse which oh. uh, 
was <laughs> for the exteriors. Yeah. 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 But, but we we had to build the actual mm -hmm. courtroom mm -hmm. uh, due to COVID issues. There were oh. um, a, a plexiglass. Yeah, plexiglass everywhere. And we mm -hmm. couldn't remove them. The 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 Ministry of of Justice in Quebec said you can't remove it. Even if it's it's only bolts. They're like I see. you can't. So the, we built it in a studio, which gave us a lot of flexibility to create 12 <laughs> minutes uh, plan séquence. Long yeah. take, Long yeah. Takes, well, yeah. And, and, and just, yeah, because we could remove walls and, and we just, um, so it looks kind of like a Montreal courtroom, but we actually made it even more uh, spaced out. Like just the, the, the glass cage, for instance, the, the, the real glass cages are mm -hmm. very bulky, very non-aesthetic, whereas, for instance, the film as this visual uh, uh, motif with like glass cages, mm -hmm. like her condo is a glass cage, the squash mm -hmm. courts are glass cages and the, the killer himself is in it. So we made it just very geometrical, uh, even more than like the real. So we enhanced kind of like the reality in, in that sense, but just, yeah, we could remove walls and, and be able to, uh, for instance, the, the the whole beginning, I wanted it to almost look like a VR sequence because mm -hmm, we are mm -hmm. in the head of a character that is almost like a robot or something like that. So, and we see the film through her eyes and and, and a robot on the one hand, but even like a, a, almost a specter, like a, a, a ghost. Uh, she's filmed like this kind of ghost-like way. Uh, she's just like, yeah, roaming, floating around kind of. And so, uh, so yeah, so that justified the idea of doing it on the, on the techno crane, that whole first sequence. Uh, and we were only, literally only able to do that kind of mise-en-scene mm -hmm. because we were uh, on, on a set, uh, on a studio, uh, which we, of course, we rehearsed. We did the 3D pre-, pre A live yeah. animatic yeah, of yeah, the, yeah. the sequence. A rehearsal, yeah. A re like and then rehearsal, we, did, we yeah. did a rehearsal, of course, with the, the yeah. main actors. Yeah. And, and just about the long takes, my, my goal is not to do like the longest possible. Like It's not, it's not something mm -hmm. that is in itself a, 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 a valuable if you know mm -hmm. and it's, it's like if, if your aim is to just do the most proficient long take well you're kind of late at the party like R yeah. russian arc has already been made and like all the great long takes have been made like the 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 the, 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 the expressive one uh this uh extraordinary anyways and so uh, uh for us it was way more about making something hypnotic almost mm -hmm. just making kind of losing track of time getting lost in that world and just letting kind of the, the setting in another rhythm that we're not necessarily used to in most and movies. that was immersive yeah, for yeah, the, yeah. the viewers yeah, yeah. so the viewers could feel like they're attending the same trial yeah yeah, yeah. oh my yeah. goodness guys i'm like i'm loving this conversation i just want to watch it with you guys and get like <laughs> it like live commentary this is so uh, interesting there, there will be one for for our dvd and, and <laughs> blu-ray Blu yeah, yeah. but yes. so far it, it's in french but utopia yeah. picked up the film in the states mm -hmm. so hopefully there will be an english uh, yeah. commentary yeah yeah they're big with uh, their uh, physical copies of movies like they do like great because uh, they, they deal with arrow i think the distribution mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the, the dvd blu-ray so i'm pretty sure like down the line in 2024 there's gonna be <laughs> like a proper uh, yeah yeah so as far as other uh entertainment that this movie reminds me of the other thing that stuck in my mind and that i, I recognized a lot of similarities to is one of my favorite tv shows ever which is uh mr robot mm -hmm. um lots mm -hmm. of uh lots of those kind of vibes with this movie yep. um we've talked a lot about the courtroom part of the film yep. let's talk more about the life outside of the courtroom and the investigation or the the um journey that this character is on um particularly with the fact that um a lot of what she's doing is more i don't know male oriented kind of activities right, whether it's right, poker right. or uh, hacking tech yeah, stuff like she's a crypto hacker bro or something that's <laughs> like disguised uh, as a as a model no 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 but uh, you, you're right and this is actually uh when we've even shaped up the character with juliette uh uh, we, we even talked about witches and like, you know how it's, it's almost like just women throughout history. They've been accused of, of, of witchcraft and but just by just not fitting into the traditional role of like how a, a woman should maybe act or react and 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 and, and, and uh, pleases uh, uh, like the male mm -hmm. perspective, maybe. And so. And yeah, just and, and we, we had fun also to create that aura, uh, that kind of witchy aura around the character. Like it's almost like her hacking is 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 her kind of 
uh, putting a spell on on the, on characters <laughs> and and all of this but on the other hand we also wanted the hacking to feel realistic uh, mm -hmm. we did lots of consulting uh, about you you mentioned mr robot it was definitely part of uh of the we re watched the, yeah. the series yeah. Uh, yeah as research <laughs> almost yeah. like i wasn't necessarily overly family i was familiar with it but like mm -hmm. we actually sat down and watched it um so so to to, to get it right so even though it is fiction it is an imaginary story it is fictional uh fictitious fictional but um but uh, i still think that a good fiction can actually represent pretty accurately all the the, the worlds that it's trying to depict in an imaginative imaginary way and so uh the courtroom of course but like the cyber elements for sure mm -hmm. and even the models like the 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 the, the, the clothes she wears for instance this is like high end fashion mm -hmm. designer clothes and I guess we could get away with it, but it, the point I strongly believe that because I, I think then the niche you're depicting can be the first to endorse the film. And now I've I've had we've had comments online where like people are like, oh, okay, yeah, the the the, the hacking scenes are actually pretty freaking accurate, or the mm -hmm. courtroom scenes are pretty. And I think yeah, we're we're at that stage of cinephilic taste where your niche can be the first one to endorse it and support it and, and, mm -hmm. and spread the word and the, and yeah. I think it's interesting because obviously I don't know anything about hacking, um, but I think the audiences know when it's fake or when it's like not as well researched. I think that yeah. there's, we can we can kind of detect that and We're overly underlined sometimes you know because we did do lots of all the designs on the screens that's a lot of work like we, it's mm -hmm. and we didn't want to integrate as much uh, in post-production like we tried to have all the animation mm -hmm. uh, uh, done beforehand to film actual screens and and have her interact with it uh but it is a lot of work because you 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 don't want to over underline kind of like the right. info where you want the eye to go because otherwise it feels super fake. Like in most yeah. films, in Hollywood films, it is like, this is the info you should look at. <laughs> and uh, and on the other hand, it should also be understandable, intelligible for an audience that might not be aware with uh, knowledgeable about poker or, mm -hmm. or you know, all, of, all that gibberish. It's, it's a tough balance. To, yeah, it's a tough uh, balance. To, it, to get. A, yeah. Speaking of tough balances, the subject matter in this film is heavy and intense. Um, and I'm sure that there was a lot of um, just like consideration on what to show and what not to show. Can you talk to me about the the process in deciding exactly how horrific uh, you wanted this this film and the subject to be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we, we wanted it to be ethical mm -hmm. <laughs> like in the way because it is yes it does deal even if it's fake like mm -hmm. it does depict like it talks about trauma about un with underage girl no mm -hmm. it, like you try to be we don't want to add another voice an exploitative voice about violence even mm -hmm. though of course like the film will attract an audience that is kind of thrill seeking and mm -hmm. looking for maybe another film about serial killer and, and this and that but we also wanted it to make it different and just the vantage point of of the of the of the main character just having the 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 uh the, the the point of view not of not the portrait of the killer just having the killer basically mute the whole mm -hmm. film silent the whole film and and not overly about like the police story like we really wanted um to have a character that is more akin to just people uh, uh regular people just people that are into the true crime craze or just interested in in looking at whatever sordid images uh happen uh in the world but it is a tough balance like we decided not to show it because i frankly again i think it is more haunting this way in a weird way because if you if you subtract one of the senses i think the other senses become more hyperactive and i think in this way it almost works like a good book or even uh, i discovered how uh, uh, like creepy pasta podcasts like horror podcasts just people telling you a creepy story and they made me feel stuff like that a lot of films that appeal to your five senses just don't manage to do because mm -hmm. we're more knowledgeable about them. We see the, where the story is going. So making a film that was narratively unpredictable was very important in creating this sense of dread and, and anxiety, but also kind of working with the psyche, the mind of the audience felt it was 
just making it haunting. Just the end goal is that mm -hmm. the film, if it when it finishes, you don't just you know be like, oh, I've had a good time, and then you forget about it in a minute. It just I I frankly try to put all my cards on the table to make something that can like make a lasting impact. Uh, yeah, very cool. Um... This is my introduction to your work uh, as a as a filmmaker. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, you guys have worked together before, correct? Yeah, on three short films, and I've also produced Nazia Butterfly, which mm -hmm. was our, our previous feature about an Olympic swimmer. Mm -hmm. um, I have so many questions about like your career and filmmaking and working together and stuff, um, which we'll have to have a drink and and discuss at some point <laughs> in, the, in the near future um but really i guess what i want to know is, uh, for someone who wants to dive into those previous uh films and short films is what expectation would you um give to people like me who want to explore your work as filmmakers yeah for for, for us it's really the the human aspect that drives us more so it's it's bringing people in universes that we've not seen that much before mm -hmm. and for, for us like Nadia Butterfly it was an, about a female Olympic swimmer and there there are rarely sports dramas uh, about female athletes mm -hmm. unfortunately we see it in documentary but fiction mm -hmm. it's often football American football <laughs> uh, like the warrior like mm -hmm. sports mm -hmm. and more manly sports Mm -hmm. So it, it was very um, interesting for us to bring that point of view and um, a, a, a female athlete that is is strong, that excels. And it's not just about like being objectified. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that that's in the case of Nadia Butterfly. But yeah, it's it's always to to have a discussion about different um, universes, uh, worlds, worlds, yeah, yeah, and uh, just also maybe stylistically, yes, the, the, I, I think now <laughs> trying to have kind of a, a style, quote unquote. I don't think I over uh, think it mm -hmm. in the sense that like uh, I'm not in a phase of my career where I I, I parody myself, like I copy myself, <laughs> but there, there are even though the films are very different and and um, um, there can be a common thread uh, like let's like a voice I guess or a, a vision maybe I don't like that word but you know mm -hmm. what I mean and just also uh, Dominique and I are are just avid movie lovers like we watch tons of films and just to to bounce off what she's what she said is that. Uh, by watching lots of films, you see a lot of films that are similar, and then you start to fantasize about the films you haven't seen and you wish you could see. And uh, it can be an angle, like, how come we don't see those those characters? Why are there no swimming movies? Why are there no films about, like, the phenomenon of killer groupies? You know what I mean? It's like, it always comes from, like, what we crave and what we don't see in the lots of films that we watch because for every original film it feels like there are a, a, a million kind of films that are kind of alike mm -hmm. and uh, we, we we strongly what would humbly try to be those films that that are like yeah just a bit outside bring a different yeah. perspective or, or point of view making it fresh yeah yeah mm -hmm. Very cool. And That's subcultures, honestly. I'm just interested in subcultures, I think. Like, if, even if it's narrative, uh, it almost comes with a documentarian kind of um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, sense of precision, dare mm -hmm. I say. So uh, while also being expressionistic as a filmmaker, like, I don't just want it to be naturalistic in the way, uh, realistic in the way it is filmed. Like, we can have fun with the cinema language, music, image, rhythm, long takes, I don't know all that jazz but also making it kind of sociology sociologically valid if it makes sense very cool guys i i honestly could talk to you like all day this is such an engaging conversation and i really appreciate that um i'm gonna bring it to a close though and just ask if there are any final thoughts on on what people should expect approaching red rooms I think no, not be scared because we've heard a lot of people that are like, ah, do I want to see this just by its the, the heaviness of the subject mm -hmm. matter? And while it is a heavy film, a dark film, 
like I don't think I, I think you you end up well it's for the audience to say but I think it, you end up more stimulated than like oh this was heavy like this was mm-hmm. hard this was so uh, and it, maybe it's not gory I think it, it's it, it's not sadistic that's just mm-hmm. the point I guess it is it is a dark film but it is dark in a generous way uh, that is I feel not sadistic in the least uh, so uh, we talked yeah. about balance. I think this is definitely <laughs> what we what we try to achieve. So uh, yeah, so I just want the audience not to be scared. Well, they can be scared of the film, but not to be scared to experience the film, if it makes sense. That's great. And ideally in theaters. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it, the, the experience is, is yeah. worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's immersive. It's, there's something about sound and image. We crafted yeah. it with a lot of uh, love and, mm-hmm. and detail. Uh, uh, it's very detail oriented. So of course, yeah, in a theater, it's always better, but of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, Pascal and Dominique, thank you guys so much for this conversation. This was a pleasure. Absolutely. And um, thank you. you know, enjoy enjoy the rest of your time in Vancouver. Oh, it was fun. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks a lot.